I'm just going to assume the Earth is spherical. So say you've got a mountain here. here so go. this is this is what you this is what you want, right? You want the radius of the Earth. Yep. There. Okay. We're close enough to the shot that the Earth could be flat. Gotcha. Like the Nathan Oakleys of the world, uh, they agree that mountains exist. Correct. That was the question that faced Al Biruni, who was an Arab scientist charged with finding the radius of the Earth. got a mountain here yep or the shard gotcha okay. now the center of the earth is right about here yep so this i'm just going to assume the earth is spherical for a moment here i'm okay with so that. this is this is what you this is what you want right you want the radius of the earth yep. there. Okay. okay so r is what we want we want to get r i'm just going to assume the earth is spherical and this here uh, let's call yep. it h h so gotcha. now you've got a right angle triangle so we, you want the height you want to work out right. the height. so here's the shard then this is the shard yep. this is the height that we need it's h okay yep. Let's, we're close enough to the shot that the Earth can be flat. Gotcha. Uh, what was that? It was a little bit difficult to hear. In order to do this, you'll have to assume that the Earth is flat. Then that's absolutely correct. You'll have to assume that the Earth is flat in order to get the height measurement of the mountain. So now... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy to assume that. The way that you can do it... I protracted that. ...is from a reasonable distance away, say here... Yep. ...we can look up... Gotcha. ...at the shard, measure that angle... What was that? You'll retract it? The assumption you must make in order to utilise the triangles that you're drawing out on that straight flat line you'll be getting an angle from. Yeah, you might want to retract the fact that you need a flat earth to do this, but your little lady friend there is proceeding to measure the height of the mountain off a flat plane. She has to. She'll be using the triangles and angles that are only acquirable if the earth is flat. Hey. Wow. I'm going all over the place yeah. with the letters here. And then we'll go a little bit further away and we'll measure it again. B. And then as long as we know this distance here, maybe we'll do like 100 metres or so. Yep. Let's call that D. Call that D for distance, yep. Then you can use just simple trigonometry. To get the height to of To get here. the height of the... Al Biruni did it using... Cubits. Mm -hmm. Which it, is like the measurement yeah, of your yeah. arm. It's elbow to the middle finger. Mm. And that is how El Biruni measured the height of the mountain. Now in our next episode, we're going to talk about what he did with that height of the mountain to measure the radius of the Earth. It's observably flat and motionless. Now when you say it's not flat, are you bringing up topo topology? What flat is? Yeah, Do you think flat. flat earthers deny the existence of mountains and hills? I don't think anything about other people. You don't think anything. Okay, so would you agree with the statement that flat earthers agree that mountains and hills exist? Basically, flat earthers, the flat earthers that you have talk talked to, like the Nathan Oakleys of the world, uh, they agree that mountains exist, correct? I've heard Nathan Oakley say that mountains are measured flat. So just to be clear, Nathan Oakley does or does not believe in mountains? Uh, Nathan Oakley has said that Al Biruni measured a mountain flat. What does that mean to you? Uh, it doesn't mean anything to me. It's a n nonsense statement. Okay, so if it doesn't mean anything to you, then how is that supposed to answer my question? Well, because you were asking me if what I thought Nathan Oakley thought, and I said to you, an instance. Now, around 1000 AD, that was the question that faced Al Biruni, who was an Arab scientist charged with finding the radius of the Earth. He had a mountain, and he needed to know how high that mountain was. Well, what have we here? This would be Al Biruni measuring the mountain off a flat plane. And it has to be measured that way. It's the only way he can get his angles to later go forth and use this measurement of the height of the mountain from a flat plane to give you your radius value. So your Earth radius value is based on a flat earth measurement. Thanks, Bob. He can measure angles and he could measure distances, but he couldn't measure the distance from either of these points to the bottom of the mountain. How do you do it? With an angle measurement, he could only get from a flat plane. Well, let's go through his mathematics. It's actually very elegant. 
Okay, let's start the problem off by figuring out some things that we know. I've rewritten our diagram up here. Again, here's the height of the mountain. Here's our, here's our point one and our point two. That's the angle alpha and that's the angle beta. Now, the total distance from D to B, the line segment DB, is going to be D to C plus C to B, which is actually our D right here, our little measured distance. So far, so good. The tangent of angle alpha, which is the far angle on the right, is going to be the height of the mountain over DB. Recall, the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. That's the toa. Now, likewise, tangent at angle B is going to be the height of the mountain over DC, which is that segment of the, of the line. So let's rewrite this a little bit and see if we can come up with some answers and solve for H, the height of the mountain. Okay, the first part of the solution requires something called algebra and being able to substitute terms and rearrange them a little bit. So let's go ahead and go over what we have. Now, originally, this entire segment, DB, equals DC plus D. We know that tan alpha equals height over DB. DB is up here. And tan beta, right there, is the height over DC. Now, we can rearrange this to find different terms. So for example, DB equals H over tan alpha. See, DB, we bring up, tan alpha, we bring down. We end up with this expression. Likewise, DC equals H over tan beta. Here was our original expression. Little d, the distance we measured, equals DB minus DC. That's very straightforward. Now we can substitute these values in for DB and DC. So we get D equals H over tan alpha minus H over tan beta. Are you starting to see how this is going to come together? So let's go ahead and see where we are now. D, the distance we measured, equals H over tan alpha minus H over tan bravo. So what we want to do is we want to continue to work this and solve for H. So let's go ahead and do that. Now the first thing that we have to do is we have to get a common denominator. And the easiest way to do that is basically cross multiply. So let's go ahead and do that. And of course I'll make it over tan alpha times tan bravo. Now we're cooking with gas. We can take this bottom term, the denominator, and we can multiply both sides by the denominator to get rid of it. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll put it right here. Now we've got one more step that we can do. Notice that we've got an H on both those terms. So let's do this. We factored out the h, and just we're left with the tangents over there. Now, obviously, the next step is let's get rid of this term right here. The easiest way to do that, divide both sides by it. And there's our answer. And that is how El Biruni measured the height of the mountain. Using a flat plane. Now, in our next episode, we're going to talk about what he did with that height of the mountain to measure the radius of the Earth. With an angle measurement he could only get from a flat plane. It's observably flat and motionless. So just to be clear, Nathan Oakley does or does not believe in mountains.